Hey guys, Tim Janik here. Um, this is an actual chart of a client that uh, one of their therapists, David, is working with. And uh, he was uh, questionable as to whether this was a leg, this client had a leg length inequality or not. Okay, now we're not actually showing an image of the client. This is going off of what he saw. Okay, but we can still use the charting as to show you how we um, determine if somebody possibly has a leg length inequality or not. Now what's interesting about this client is when she's standing up, okay, what we see is when we look at these three lines here, okay, and the floor is level, is that we're seeing that this right tibia here is shorter than the left one, okay, indicating that her right uh, leg is shorter than her left, okay. Um, but then when we look over here at the supine position, when she lays down, we actually see everything going parallel, okay? Now keep in mind that when we do these measurements, these measurements are mainly to get an idea of what's going on. Uh, if we really want to know what's going on with the leg length inequality, then we rule out other things that are going on in the pelvis first, uh, such as an obliquity, um, other muscular tightness, things like that. And then we have them usually go get an x-ray, okay? Uh, the other thing that we also look at is on arch, which I'm going to point that out here in a second. But if we look at when she lies down, everything is parallel to each other. That means that every leg in her, uh, in her limbs down here, every bone seems to be uh, the exact same length, okay, as far as what we know without an x-ray, right? When we come back over here and we look at this, one of the things that um, David saw was a fallen arch and he indicated that that right arch was actually a lot more fallen than the left one. Well, a fallen arch actually has the ability to drop that hip down to make it look like a leg length inequality, okay? So based off of what we were seeing here in supine position where she didn't have one, and I'm standing up, she does have one, but she has a fallen arch, one of the things that we're gonna to indicate to that client is to go ahead and go get an arch support, or actually what we're gonna to do to recommend to that client is to go get her arches checked and see if she needs an arch support in that right leg. After she gets that, when she comes back in, we're gonna double check her hips again and see if that made a difference with what was going on here with her greater trochanters and if that made a change in her hips, okay? Uh, if we look further up, we can actually kind of make a guess as to what her spine is doing. And it looks as if maybe she might have a little bit of a C curve, okay? In this particular client, she's complaining of uh, low back pain in that region. Uh, she's got um, some disc problems in L5, S1 and L4, S, L4 and S, L5, okay? So with a pelvis that's tilted like that, that's going to tilt the spine which is going to create um, a compensation that's gonna happen further up in the spine. Now the pelvis can also compensate for that in different ways, which I'm not gonna really get into much of that right now. Uh, but the main thing I wanted to point out is the, one of the cool things about uh, posturology, the course that neurosomatic educators teaches, is that they teach you how to really understand what's going on with the body as far as the leg length and equality. It's very, very thorough um, in assessing that Okay, where when we check it, we check the, great, the greater trochanters here, the tibial tuberosity, and the heel pads. Okay, um, after that, if we start to suspect something, then we suggest them to go get an x ray to determine um, if it really is a leg length inequality. And if we do find out it is a leg length inequality, um, we can actually uh, look at the measurement of that x-ray and determine how much of a difference it is. So the other thing is um, we also check out the arches, okay? So that's one of the things that a leg length inequality could be coming from or supposedly what looks like a leg length inequality is a fallen arch making that hip drop, okay? So then that, there it becomes really important to have somebody that you can refer to or uh, recommend that they go get a arch support for their foot. So anyways, I just wanted to uh, let's show you guys this. Um, this is uh, some valuable information. It can really help your clients out a lot and help to solve their problems that they're having. And uh, that's Posturology 101. Also, we have uh, in Houston, the Somatic ALP 
uh, course will be in Houston. In that course, we teach the Posturology 101 along with uh, integrative approaches to cervical neck pain and integrative approaches to extremity pain. So anyways, um, I'll talk to you guys later.